stretcher bars, stretcher frames. This is an example of one that's almost completely done. Um, all it needs is a cross brace, which we will show at the end. This is the back of it. So I just wanted to show you before we start. And so these are our supplies. Um, we pretty much need all the same things um, for stretcher bars as for the cradled wood panel. We have one by two by eights and one by three by eights. Um, another option is we have um, a few pieces of quarter round, which is a piece of wood that's round on a quarter of it. And this is another option which we can show you when you would use this. Okay, so the first step is to cut off the edges of the wood, similar to how we did in the cradled wood panel, to make sure you have a square edge um, to start with. The second step is you're going to take your 1x2s and bring them to the table saw, and you're going to cut um, an angled edge. So, as you can see on this frame, this angled edge is where the canvas will rest. You have to make sure it's at an angle so that when the canvas is stretched on it, you won't be able to see the edges of the wood. So we will show you you how to do that first. Okay, now we're going to bevel our our pieces of one by two that are going to be actually touching the canvas. And so we have to do that on the table saw. We set our blade at an angle. Uh, right now we have it at about 18 degrees. Okay. Um, and the most important thing to remember about ripping a piece of wood is to keep it really firmly against this, against this like back piece, so you know you're cutting it straight. And another thing, if you're doing a very long piece of wood, make sure that you set up the stand so that you're not like with, with <laughs> finagling with it out in the open, and you have some stability when you're making your cut because this is a very dangerous piece of machinery. You want to be as safe as possible. First, get my eye and ear protection. Now that we have made a bevel on the one by twos, we are going to attach them to the sides of our one by threes. And that's going to make basically our stretcher bars that we're going to cut and put together and make our stretcher. Um, this, the, the bevel that we made, actually just one way we could have done this. We could have keep, kept these intact as they were and we could have put one by twos on top. And that would have basically given us the same, the same result as cutting them on the table saw. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make our pilot holes on our 1x2s and we're going to glue and attach them to the 1x3s. Countersinking my pilot holes for the 1x2s. Now we're going to gong the edge of the 1x2 and attach it to the 1x3 and screw them together. Okay, now that we have both, like all of our stretcher bars made, we're going to measure for our miter cuts. So the easiest way to do this is to get a triangle and to just first just make one 
one uh, 45 degree angle, draw it on the back, the broadest side, like so. Hang on. Like cool. so. Thank you. <laughs> and then draw a straight line from where the edge, where it meets the edge, down the side. So now you have like basically a three-dimensional representation of where the cut's gonna be. And so you're gonna measure from this line to however long it needs to be. Okay, so hold me on that line. And I'm going to measure 40 inches. Measure my one of my sides. That's going to be the 40-inch side of my stretcher. And so now I'm going to get my triangle again and meet that point and draw a 45-degree line that way, and then draw a straight line going down. So now I have the line for both sides of the bar. And that way I know that I'm not gonna like make a crazy cut, I'm not measuring the wrong side. In the wrong direction. Yeah, exactly. And so once I make the cut, I'll have it. And now we have to measure for all four sides. And that's all there is. To uh, miter cut our stretcher bars. And that, this is why it was important to um, draw your lines on the bottom and on the side because as you can see the line on the bottom that we had drawn you can't see it once you put it on the flat surface of the miter saw so you're going to line up your cut with the line that you drew on the side and it's also important that you make sure that any cut that you make is not where a screw is if there's a screw there you need to remove it and reposition it so now I'm going to miter cut uh, 45 degrees for pretty much all of the, yeah, essentially all of the cuts I made are going to be 45 degrees. So you just basically set the saw at 45 and just cut away. reversed the miter saw so that it's 45 degrees in the other direction so that you can cut the other side of your stretch bars. I just finished one and you see it's 45 in one direction and 45 in the other. It's also, this is the reason why it's important to draw lines on more than one side of the piece of wood because once you flip it over you won't be able to see your line again. So it's important that you have it on more than one side so that you can do both sides of the stretch your bar and so basically you're just going to go through and cut the rest of your wood using the 45 degrees of the, in the other direction okay, okay um now Lindsay's is putting countersink holes for the two screws we're going to have in each corner you have to make sure that they're low enough so that they go into both the 1x2 and the 1x3. This is a miter vise or a framing vise. It just allows us to get like a really nice, stable, secure uh, connection that connects the miter together in a way that we couldn't do in any other way. So, that's, and we're also going to be using a lot longer screws since we're using connecting two very wide pieces of wood. This is, I think, it's at least a two inch. two inch. It's a two inch screw. So we're gonna have a two inch screw that can at least go through the piece of one by two and into the one by three that we connected together earlier. And we're also gonna glue the connection. Wood glue is pretty strong. Yeah. 
make sure the corner is nice and straight. Right, you want to make sure sort of underneath is even, the top's even before you put in any screws. We'll put in the smaller screw first. It keeps the joint secure as it's dry. It's just a lot easier to deal with. Now we'll glue up the edges. Okay, so these are our triangles right here. These are going to go in the corners of the frame. Um, we're going to put them in with maybe half inch screws and we're going to go cut them out right now. Uh, we've cut our corner pieces and so now it's just a matter of putting them in. So we're going to glue the back of the triangle and it's not going to hurt. Might as well glue where it's going to be placed. Put it down, make sure it's firmly in the corner. And we have smaller screws this time just because it's only going to be putting in this small piece of wood. So. So the screws for this bracket are pretty small. Just want to make sure it's sort of even with the bottom piece of wood. So then uh, before you stretch the frame, since all the edges are really sharp, you just want to make sure that you take some sandpaper and get all the edges so that when you stretch a canvas over it, you don't rip it. Because this is extremely sharp and the edges here too, this top edge. Okay. On behalf of Tyler, the Tyler Painting Department, we want to thank you for watching these videos today. Um, if you have any questions in the upcoming weeks, there will be painting TAs down here to help you use the machines or you know, with equipment. Um, and there will also be shop techs available, as always, for scheduled hours, and they're here to assist you with any equipment that you might have problems with. So thanks and good luck building! Again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>